Hello and welcome to another Feedback Friday. Hi guys, how are you? Today it's a bumper of a live show because we have a student success just for you. We have searched and searched and searched and we have found a very good example of if you graduate from De Montfort University, you can be a success. What am I talking about and what's this got to do with you? Well, as you know, UK Bright Education, we are authorised partners for Demopoli Universities. Admissions are still open. You are very welcome to submit your application to UK Bright Education. All you need to do is to send your uh, DM me direct, whether you're on LinkedIn or YouTube or on Instagram, or you can send your CV just there to that email address. OK, now. What's that got to do with you and me? What's the title? The title today is Advertising and PR Management, Studying That in the UK. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. It's a Friday, so I'm going to introduce you to the programme leader at De Montfort University for that course. So here is my special guest, Associate Professor David Gordon. Hi, David. Hi. Hi, hi Afsana. Hello, everyone. Um, great that you should join us. Let me move over to the centre of the camera. Right, so hi everyone, my name is David Gordon, I'm Associate Professor of Marketing, I come from, I actually come from a commercial past, 25 years in business, a couple of my own small businesses, part-time working at De Montfort, 50% for 19 years, crazy doing one of the half jobs, left corporate life six years ago, Associate Professor and now I'm the Programme Leader for the Postgraduate Marketing Courses. So um, Afsana has invited me here today to give a talk about the MSc in Advertising and PR Management degree. Fantastic degree. I love working at De Montfort. It's just like in my corporate life, global companies, there's people from all over the world of different nationalities, religions, everyone's different. And De Montfort is just like that. It is such a melting pot, De Montfort and Leicester is. I love it. It is. As you can see, the professor is very passionate about the university. We all are. Um, just within one faculty, we have about 130 nationalities. So students, if you're watching this, if you are a student at De Montfort University, you don't know who you'll be sitting next to. You could be from a student from a country that you've never even heard of. So you're right, David. It is actually a melting pot of different nationalities. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So would you like to share your PowerPoint slide about today's um, course? Yeah, absolutely. One Let's have second. a look. Let me. Okay. Brilliant. OK, so I'm going to talk about the MSc in Advertising and PR Management. This is one of three courses very focused on exactly what it says, Advertising and PR Management. So those students who have got who are quite creative, like the sound of, of agency life and and public relations life and that dynamism this is the course for you so i'm going to go through a number of slides um so it, it's for students wanting a career in advertising and public relations again have may, maybe even seen this on films and television maybe you've studied a little bit of this at an undergraduate level that sort of thing um it, it has the feel of a marketing agency environment in what we teach so many of the practitioners uh, of the lecturers come from a practitioner background in De Montfort in the marketing departments so over 40 percent of the lecturers have either been in commerce not just me but been in commerce with all sorts of companies um or maybe are even consultant now one of the ladies she started her graduate career in working for Saatchi and Saatchi one of the world's biggest advertising agencies um it's live decision-based teaching so we, we um, an assessment will have uh, assessments that are based on what we call authentic assessments, things that are live. Um, cutting edge advertising and PR knowledge. We, we are partnered with one of the biggest advertising and marketing agencies in the East Midlands, a company called Rock Kitchen Harris. Um, search DMU News and put in RKH and you'll see a press release from number of months ago strategic relationship we've signed what that means is every few months we meet with them and they they don't change everything on the course but they'll give input strategic advice trusted advisor input right from the the live directors to the company into the teaching and assessment of the uh, of the module um so practitioner agency content and um 
it, I, I put a quote at the bottom from from a previous student who's who's actually studied this. Let me go on to the next bit. So the modules that are some are core, some are optional. So managing advertising communications. So from taught by someone who's got a, a, a career of experience in this area. Uh, corporate communications from uh, module led by a lady who used to work for Microsoft's PR agency, worldwide PR agency. So absolutely the cutting edge of PR knowledge and corporate communications. Um, creative brand strategy, I won't read through all of these, customer insight, direct digital marketing, research method for marketers. So it is. it has a very strong feel also of digital marketing and e-marketing because that's what advertising and PR really is formed with these days. Yes, there are still some industries that rely on you know, paper things, uh, paper leaflets, uh, brochures and flyers that will want industry shows where people meet face to face. But as the years go on and our graduates go into certain professions, graduates that are like yourselves, just so used to living in a world where we've always got a phone in our hands, we're always online, more and more of those environments will be just totally digital. So we, we form our teaching and form our assessments in that way. Let me go to the next slide. Um, at the end of the, uh, the modules, the individual modules, so 15 credits equates to 150 hours. Not all of that's teaching. It's made up of some teaching, some seminars, some uh, individual reflective study, revision for assessment. So of, the, of your individual modules, you get the option at the end uh, to do, if you join in October, over the following summer, you'll get to do either a theoretical dissertation or a module that I developed when I left corporate life a number of years ago called the Business Research Project. I have interviewed graduates for about 20 odd years. Some really smart graduates, very bright, really good dissertations, but they didn't have the practical work experience. And I wanted to develop a module that gave students that practical experience. So you'll be doing it for 10 weeks over the summer. You won't be working in a company but you'll be, if you're like a junior marketing consultant with that company. And so you'll have live business interaction with them. Um, and you get a choice of, of a variety of projects that you take. And I put here, so marketing agency consultancy experience, it, it is totally live. I, I spend weeks and weeks searching out and liaising with a number of agency, creative agency, PR agency contacts for live projects that are coming up and the key is it has to be at the right time, not too early, not too late. So we've got projects at the moment with that agency. So we're, we're, we've started the process for the cohort that joined last October. We've got projects with uh, JCB, with FIFA, the online football game. Some people may, may know, so electronic arts, those people who play games at night. So uh, I, I know the one of the worldwide product managers for, for that game. Um, another football theme is with the Football Association of Britain. We've got four creative marketing agencies on board, um, seven projects in total from those guys, and with all with different inferences and implications from what they want. So it's live projects. Why have I done this? So that graduates, when they do it, so that the master's students when they, they have their 10 weeks, they do the research, the analysis, prepare the information that goes back to the company. You can put that experience on your CV um, and, when you, and job applications. And when you go for an interview, if they talk about practical experience, you can say, yeah, I, I learned these subjects, I learned ABC, but I've actually done this as a junior marketing consultant. This was live. Forget that it was with the university. It was absolutely live. I've learned this. I've done this. And if I got the job, I could do that tomorrow for you. So it's it, it's that kind of cutting edge of practical live experience with this with this project. Um, lastly, we have a number of accreditations. So people doing the uh, MSc in advertising and PR management have the option, depending on the modules that they choose. So the Chartered Institute of Marketing Worldwide Professional Marketing Organization, the CIM, 
they recognize the standard of teaching at the Montfort University and people studying this MSc get exemptions from two of the modules that you have to take. So it's only a couple that you need to take afterwards. Same with the International the Institute of Data and Digital Marketing. And also, very importantly, people who want to go into the public relations profession, we're accredited with the Chartered Institute of Public Relations, the CIPR. So uh, external organizations really, really um, value the marketing that we teach and we've got these accreditations. So uh, that's it from me, but just to say uh, places are open. If people are interested, speak to Afsana, speak to Bright Education, that there are the, the, there's still a window of applications. And, and we'll consider people from all sorts of um, backgrounds and industries. Also, um, if people have got um, a, a qualification that they maybe wish they'd got a better one, and they've got some uh, a number of years of credible working experience as well, we'll also consider that. So, Afsana. That's it for me. Apart, part to say, sorry, the very last slide. I nearly forgot this one. Um, mm -hmm. This was a student who studied the um, uh, uh, the marketing postgrad qualification a number of years ago, and I, I'll never forget this. It's about six, seven years ago, maybe a little less, maybe five years ago. And I, I give a lot of um, employability help to to postgraduates. I've, so they've been on the recruitment side, have been on the other side of, of uh, um, employability. So I can give those underlying hints and tips to students. And these students, I've had an email me to say, can I, can I have a call with them? She's getting contacted through LinkedIn by a company. They, they're not saying who they are. And she was just a little concerned. Turned out it was Google. It was their internal headhunting company. She had... Uh, done so well in her assessments, done these live sort of ass assignments, had a bit of industry experience as well, and she now works for Google. So a you know, massive success story from, from a De Montfort student. Brilliant. That's it for me for the moment. Any questions from anyone? Yes, so ladies and gentlemen, if you do have any questions, students out there, let me make it bigger. So basically, as you can see, um, uh, Professor has actually provided PowerPoint after this uh, this webinar. Um, if you would like to have further information rather than you screenshotting, why don't you DM us direct? And I'm more than happy to send you the PDF copy of the PowerPoint. So at least you've got something to look at and to refer to. If you happen to be an applicant at De Montfort University and a credibility interview is coming up and you applied for this course, all you need to do is to DM me direct as well, because knowing content of the course, you know, what, what lays ahead, the modules, as David was saying, with regards to the special project, um, that will help you with the credibility interview. All you need to do is to DM me direct. Right, David, um, that's such an impressive course. I mean, it's accredited. You can't get better than that, surely. No, it's, uh, and these are worldwide organisations. So you can potentially come out from De Montfort with your MSc, the practical experience to help with employability, and the worldwide recognized accreditations. Wow. So it's kind of three levels. Brilliant, brilliant. Right, I need to bring in my student, but uh, bring on my student guest. But I've got a question for you. Um, it's from MySpace. Hello. It says, I would like to know if there is any placements available. Um, we don't officially do placements on a on the MSC. But, but obviously with a tier four visa, if applicants come on that, they can work up to 20 hours a week. And there are a number of agencies in Leicester, and we I work with them all, and there will often be situations where they'll contact me to say, I need someone full-time or I need someone part-time, a bit of time. Um, and these are people, obviously, we can never promise jobs with them or employment with them or anything, but I'm more than happy to put students forward. Brilliant. So MySpace, um, if that helps you, as you can see, our lecturers, our associate professor, David, he is the program leader. They, um, all the program leaders, I mean, David is actually program leader for three courses. He is actively telling you live that he is willing to help you to go out. He'll go out of his way in order to help you. Because at the end of the day, David, isn't it right that if students get a job, then it's success for them and for us? 
Is that right? I, I, absolutely. Absolutely. It is definite success. Again, I, I, I can't promise anything, but there have <laughs> been situations funny. where I, I've I've been contacted by a company. I've reached out to a number of people on the course. Not everyone's interested, but those who are genuinely interested, I passed on the, uh, the CVs and I can't name the companies, but, but the, I can think of two specifically where they've sponsored um, international students to work in. Brilliant. And it's it's funny that we talked about PDFs because MySpace, she's actually got an admission on the course. So she's one of your potential students, David. Brilliant. So that's nice. <laughs> we hope to see you very soon. Brilliant. Now, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to my uh, uh, student alumni guest. So actually, we should really call him a student. He's an alumni guest of Dumont for University. Um, he comes originally from Nigeria, and he now professes to be a PR expert. So here's our alumni guest, Ahanko. I hope I pronounced that right. Hello. <laughs> Unmute yourself, Ahanko. You need to unmute. Unmute. I can't. We can't hear you. Oh, Hello. sorry about that. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Nice to oh. meet everyone. Oh, thank you for coming. Right. So, David, how do you, how do you feel? One of your graduates? Uh, no, fantastic, fantastic. I, I, uh, you probably, I, don't, I, I must have briefed you a number of times in induction sessions and uh, and other things. Brilliant. Yes, I, I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> I remember oh. running to get to my laptop not to miss any of those induction days at the beginning. Oh. Oh. Those are the days. Student days are the best, isn't that right, Ahanko? Student days. Uh, to, to be fair, <laughs> you don't get that back. Once you want to start work, you don't get to enjoy, just not necessarily enjoy yourself, but have those moments to yourself to think about other things you love to do. Right. That's, you sound very serious to me right now. Okay, so tell me, when did you actually graduate? <laughs> When did you graduate? So, uh, well, I did um, my convocation January this year. Wow. Okay. So very recent. Very recent. Brilliant. Yeah, very recent. So why did so you choose basically, the course? I did my first degree in mass communication. So I had love for advertising and public relations. And I already I started working in, back in Nigeria. I was working in advertising as an agency worker. So I enjoyed it, but. During, when COVID struck, I was like, nah, I, I need to take other steps forward and I need to do something with myself. And that was what pushed me towards going for my master's. And there was no other course to choose, obviously. So I went for advertising and public relations management because I have passion for advertising and public relations. So um, tell, tell us about yourself. I mean, you've graduated very, very, very recently. So uh, tell me about your current position. That sounds very exciting. Well, I, I'm one of the lucky ones, I would say, but I currently work as a digital PR and content exec executive for Rewind Creative. So my day-to-day -day goes is all about coming up with PR campaigns, coming up with reactive content, and coming up with articles to sell our clients and push them out to the public. I mean, it's not easy, but it's fun at the same time because you get to think out of the box, you get to come up with something mm -hmm. creative and... It's always fun because going to the office every day, you know, it's going to be something new, something different, and you have to start with it at the same time. So it's always fun. Brilliant. Right. So, David, I've got something else for you. Um, a lovely student. It says, I'm um, I'm excited to be, we have an excited attendee. Fantastic. So <laughs> she's just passed, uh, she's just in a credibility interview. Uh, Olufunka, I wish you the best. You should hear from them in a couple of days. Okay. And uh, she can't wait to join your department, David. Brilliant, brilliant. So pleased you said oh, that. That's nice. We look forward to seeing you. We hope to see you very soon. So, David, um, as Ahanko said, that it's tough, it's easy, it's a bit of both. Do you prepare students for that tough life after graduation? Uh, we do. We do. I, I'm not brutal with students. I'm a nice chap. But uh, but I, I'll, <laughs> I'll tell students about <clears throat> it, it, it can be tough. You know, the agency world, it, it can be long hours. If you get a client because your your customer is king, your clients, mm. it, it, you're their servant. And if that client changes its mind very last minute with a campaign, you don't say, no, oh, I'm really sorry, but I'm, I've got to go home. You just drop everything and you just do the work. It's tough, mm. but the rewards are fantastic. 
a, a canker like, like you said it, it's that you're the lucky ones it's there is a buzz to the environment that that creative um yes. discovery buzz yes. i do agree with that and what you asked about preparing us for the agency life and the tough network or yeah. the tough situations we're going to face when we start working uh, i like to remember our corporate comms lecturer um caroline mrs caroline spence because i believe um professor david mentioned that earlier so you know that was one of my favorite courses when i was doing advertising and populations management because i got to study real life scenarios there, there was a particular class where we had to do, come up with case studies of of um, crisis communication situations and analyzing mm -hmm. it and seeing, okay, if you were the person in charge at that point in time, what would you have done differently? I loved that because it put us in real life situations where we had to analyze, we had to think outside the box. Okay, what are these people done? What would I have done differently? And how would I have tackled this issue? So it was really interesting. And a, a big secret I'll, I'll probably just put out there. So when I was applying for this job I currently have, I can tell you candidly that it was my BRP that helped me because I know um, Prof mentioned you being able to either do a business research project or a normal thesis, but I did a business research project. And my business research project was on um, the studying community relations between Bristol and, and one, I think it was Bristol and Leicester. So I had to do a comparative analysis. And most of the questions, most of the questions I answered my interview questions with were from the research from the... I had done for that BRP because I, I was grounded with the research topic and I was just like, okay, this was what this was what I did. This is what can actually work. I, I was given like um, a brief to tackle. So I looked at the the way I would I tackled the BRP project and I looked at the things that could actually work and try to bring everything together. So it was actually a fun experience for me. That that is just so brilliant to hear. Yeah. Do you know what, Kanka? That's exactly why I introduced it. That is just mm -hmm. wonderful. I and people are viewing us. I didn't even prompt him. That's fantastic. Um, it was exactly for that reason for people who mm -hmm. maybe hadn't got the practical experience at an interview. I know because I've I've spent years asking these sort of questions. Mm -hmm. Tell me about a situation with this. What would you do in this situation? Give me an example of this. And it's that the BR, the business research project, the BRP, that live project that can give you that material. Yeah, Brilliant. yeah. Because my my BRP involved tackling um, how Bristol City could improve the community relations and the community management between the council and the people. So I looked at um, community relations and creating a digital space. So the same the same um, ideas I had to tackle those issues was the same ideas I saw I could easily to life on the brief I was given so it was it was really interesting for me brilliant brilliant that's that's very fortuitous uh, I know David you actually this is a personal pet love isn't it the actual project oh, this is a pet love, love that you have M yeah. this yeah. Is, it, it, it is and uh, Kanko can you remember the briefings I, I gave the preparatory <laughs> lectures for them no I, I yes I, 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 I think we, we heard about yes I think we had about three or four lectures of between three to five lectures every week when they were talking about the um, business research project and yeah. the do's and don'ts. So I, yeah, it was, we were really prepared for it. We knew what to expect. Good, good. Brilliant. That's, that sounds fine. I'm going to write down what BRP stands for, for those students who don't know. So that's fine. Right. So um, I was just wondering, did Dumont Free University help you at all in actually getting your current job? How, how did it come well, about? Well, I applied via LinkedIn basically I, because I was job hunting after after finishing my program. I started job hunting because I wanted to do something productive with my time. So, I, apart apart from the fact that I know my BRP project played a big part, a big role in my interview process and all that, but okay. uh, my going out and looking for the job roles, I, I did all those myself. But I also had conversations with them. Um, Professor David, because I, I asked him for advice on how to go about things. Because the Nigerian market and the UK market are actually kind of different. So I don't know if he remembers me actually sending emails back to back and saying, "What should I do? Yeah. How do I go?" So he actually he actually helped me with that. Even I remember um, going for a session he directed me to with, um, the student support where I had to rejig my CV and come up with different angles to um, the interview questions, how to go about it. So 
it really helped me do it because that was the period I actually actually, actually got the Brilliant, brilliant. So what kind of um, advice would you give um, Ahonko, if you don't mind, with regards to students who are actually watching this right now, whether it's now or later on, but what advice would you give them with regards to studying? Should they look for jobs uh, as soon as they finish or in the middle? What do you think in terms of timing? Oh, for timing, I would say you should start looking for jobs before you finish. I, I wish I had started looking for jobs before I finished because after finishing, I had about one or two months before this year. That's before the convocation. We okay. finished the um, lectures officially in September. So I had September to January, and I wasn't doing anything within that period. So I was like, if I had probably started applying earlier, I'll probably have started doing something within that period. So we all need money at the end of the day. So. You, you should, I would say they should actually start applying before the end of their yeah, school year because companies are actually, are actually willing to do this. And I have a friend that's proper actually knows who applied during um, during the school year and got his job. That's on and so. So it was one of the motivations. Yeah. That I knew that, okay, yes, I like to do something. Brilliant, brilliant. Oh. No, and I, I, I'm sorry, no, I, I encourage students to mm. stop looking for jobs. You know, part of the uh, preparatory lectures for the business research project is specifically on how to use your business research project at an interview right. and I'll say a number of times to the students start looking mm. now and give them tips on on which you know where to look and how to look and what to search for and I I will I won't tell them what to do but I'll say you may want to think about making an application right now because with a lot of companies, it takes a bit of time for them looking at your application, first interview, telephone interview, first interview, second interview. And students can be doing that while they're doing their project. So during the project, so don't start right at the end. Akanko did it a couple of months before he finished. But you'd recommend yeah. while they're doing the BRP, the business research project to start? Yeah, yeah, I, I would. I wouldn't, like Akanko said, I, I wouldn't leave it right to the end. I would start thinking about it when you're doing your business research project. Okay, good. Uh, Akanko, you said uh, the importance of LinkedIn. I'm hearing that a lot. Professor, you've been saying LinkedIn as well. So the power of LinkedIn, I mean, we're, we're today we're actually on LinkedIn. So the power of LinkedIn must be pretty powerful, guys. Massive, absolutely massive. How found, the lady I said, got the who went now works at Google. Um, mm. Akanko, yourself, it, it is how people look for jobs it's how professionals look for um, pro other professional people the key thing is yeah. no one everyone's honest not that people aren't honest on their cvs but because it's so viral and visible your mm. profile on on uh, linkedin it's there and and for everyone to search yeah yeah uh another thing i would say about LinkedIn because back in Nigeria I used LinkedIn not as much as I use it now but I used it back in Nigeria but coming here I saw it was a different ball game because every business you can think of is on LinkedIn and any updates they have in their business is either uh, looking for this particular role or look for someone to fill in for this particular person for the main thing. they all post it on LinkedIn so you can easily go on LinkedIn and just keep applying look for rules and you can streamline the search to whatever you're looking for because mm. I had opportunities to go for media planning or advertising rules because I had a background in advertising from the company I was coming from in Nigeria. But because I knew I wanted public relations, I kept streamlining my search to just public relations rules and okay. here I am. So I feel LinkedIn actually helped because LinkedIn helped and it was through LinkedIn I know it got and, and we, sorry, I've said the same off Sana. So, I can mention about CV help. One yeah. of the things that, that about the Faculty of Business and Law at De Montfort, um, we've got a fantastic careers department, and we'll give training sessions on CVs, how to prepare them, interview skills, presentation skills, interviews, LinkedIn preparation. We'll do all of this. So, when students start to apply for jobs, They've got all that training experience behind them. Yes. No. Um, I mean, I, I think you're being very humble, uh, Professor, because actually, Demotfi University, mm -hmm. their career services is actually award winning. So for 2021, they were the best career services around the whole, um, you know, in, a, in the UK, the yeah. best. 
So yeah. they must be best for a reason. And um, as, Akanka, <laughs> as Professor said, they're there for you. They're paid to help you, whether it's sorting out your CV, even sorting out LinkedIn, perhaps your profile. There's just so many things that they're actually there to help you. And you should utilize them. It's a tool that you can use. Is that right? Yeah, yes, I, I, I absolutely agree with that. I mean, I, some students might be thinking, um, I probably have had a job in Nigeria. I've done tons of interviews or I have, I mean, I had a CV before I came here and I had a job before I yeah, came confident. here. Yeah, so confident. I've been in interviews, obviously. But the market is different. The people mm. are different. The culture is different. So you need to, they say when you're in Rome, you have to be like the Romans. So you need to learn what the market is all about. You need to learn what the culture is all about. And the career support department will help you with all of that because they really do help you with that. Oh, uh, Professor, is there any last words, pearls of wisdom you'd like to share with the audience <clears throat> with regards to studying at Timothy University? Um, we, <clears throat> we've talked about fantastic uh, diversity of people. You will meet people on your course who you'll stay in contact with for the rest of your life. And yeah. these are people, come me back to LinkedIn, you'll link with, form this kind of cohort of people. And there are so many times in business that maybe you're looking for another position or one of your connections is saying, how are you doing? Remember me from you know, a couple few years ago, we've got an opening, is this of interest to you? It's having that connections. It, 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 it's like I always say to students, your your network is your net worth wow having that that network we need to write that down that's good um, <laughs> I, it, that's it's good. really so important so uh, you'll get that feel at De Montfort, and we really really promote that with students of staying in touch it, it, it's incredibly diverse it's a campus right next to the the city center although it's not closed off people can walk through but it has this campus feel it's uh, two or three minutes of walk away from a very international, vibrant market, food market. Um, we've got an absolute state of the art sports facilities on site, uh, a state of the art um, um, library, uh, library, if anyone wants to go in there for books and what have you. So, yeah, great university. Brilliant, brilliant. I mean, that's that's fantastic. That's uh, well, pearls of wisdom. I hope that helps you to, to, to be reassured. It is an inclusive environment. It's a home from home, which is actually one of their key messages. Uh, Akanka, do you have any um, advice or tips to give to any students who are watching right now? Well, I would say, first things first, trust the lecturers because they know a lot and they would help you a lot. I mean, when I met, um, I keep talking about um, Professor David and Mrs. Caroline Spence, because they were they were one of them, one of the two lecturers I know I had relationship with because I could always communicate with them at any point in time. I could send an email and Prof would even just respond. Even on Sundays, I'd be like, okay, <laughs> that's actually really nice. So I actually enjoyed that too. And they have an international student support body. I mean, when I was in school, I, I, I came in 2020, 2021, as of 2022, that's it's been lonely for me so this um, international student support body actually would actually help connect you to other africans or other nigerians so that you form your own little community and you don't feel lonely uh, not, um, i'm saying it's because the students are not coming in during the COVID situation now and i came in during the COVID situation and it was really lonely for me and this mm. international student support body was actually really helpful so i'll, I'll just say that you trust the lecturers and if they have any problem, you can easily walk up to your lecturers, especially Professor David, and always willing to help. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much, um, Akanko. It's really, really lovely to see you here. You, like I said, you are uh, uh, aspirational to many students. You've just graduated. You are a pandemic graduate. We have to uh, describe it like that, but you survived and you've succeeded, God allow So thank you so yeah. much for coming. And I wish you, we all wish you the very, very best for your future career. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I wish everyone the best also. Oh, thank you. Professor, as always, thank you so much for coming. Um, coming here is a, it's, it's a big, big deal for us. And as you can see, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the professor is very passionate about all of his three courses. Not only is he a program leader for this course, but he's also a program leader for a, a couple more um, programs. 
you need to go back to YouTube or to LinkedIn to see those other webinars, again, with our lovely student alumni as well. So, Professor, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. All right. Then. Thank you, guys. Now you can enjoy your weekend. So take care. <laughs> bye bye. All right. Bye bye. 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 Wow. OK, now I don't know about you, but do you have a good feeling about this? I am I'm getting positive vibes from Akonko, don't you think? We should have asked him where he's coming from. I forgot to ask which part of Nigeria he's coming from. He is Nigerian and we would have loved to have uh, asked him to which village he came from and tribe and things like that, but it's OK. But the point is this, my friends, you have got a student here who's telling you piles of wisdom. Trust your teachers. OK, he said, make sure you've got a LinkedIn profile. OK, he's also saying things like um, you need to get out there. It's not going to be easy. But he kept trying and trying and trying. He only graduated a couple of months ago. Alhamdulillah, he got a job. So that is a success story. He's been chosen specially because he said, look, I know what it's like to be at Dumont for University and I'd like to talk about it. And that's why he's here. Tell me how you felt about that. And the professor, of course, he's a program leader for several courses. I'm so, so grateful that some of you came here. Some of you finished your credibility interview. I'm glad you did that. And some of you have actually got an admission and I wish you all the best. Now, if you'd like an admission, it's not too late for September, as long as your documents are ready and your finance is ready for September. If it is ready, go ahead, DM me direct. I'll be more than happy to represent you as your agent. If September is too close, you're very welcome to apply for January 2023. You can bring your family. You're allowed to work part time while you're studying, while your dependents can work full time. You're allowed to stay in the UK for a further two years after graduation. Um, and there's so many more benefits. Right. Until next time, my friends. Take care. Bye bye.